Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to very interesting game which has its own name. And as you know, every time the game has its own name, it has to be very interesting. This time the name is Mannheim Steamroller. So the game was played in 1914 in Mannheim and the name Mannheim Steamroller actually comes from the 18th century German musical technique where a crescendo passage having a rising melodic tone. So you can imagine how the game look like. And nowadays Mannheim Steamroller is also the American neoclassical new age music group. So uh, quite popular name. Uh, let's jump into the players. I'm gonna introduce you Alexander Flamberg. You know already Alexander because I show you the game uh, in the last video where he played over there you can check it when he played against Akiba Rubinstein and in 1914 Alexander Flamberg is already 34 years old and his rating according to chess metrics 2578 it gives him a uh, 25th place in the world so definitely very solid and strong player however not the elite player and he play as black and his opponent is famous Rudolf Spielmann German player 31 years old uh, very strong 2699 it's his ranking and um, actually it gave him the place in the top 10 so very elite player and let's see what happened on the board Rudolf Spielmann open with e4. We have e5, knight c3, very interesting game. So f4 is probably coming. Knight f6, f4 as planned. And now the strongest move, what would you play here? You don't take this pawn, the most popular move, you know, 100 years ago and nowadays is d5. Uh, we have f takes on e5, knight takes on e4, and here knight f3, very important move. Otherwise, this queen could come on h4, and with this knight on e4, that would be, you know, deadly for white. We have bishop on g4 now, however, uh, bishop on e7 nowadays is more popular uh, or even bishop on c5 more active and you know it's very important for black to castle early in this opening and you will see why so a bishop on g4 pinning the knight was played in the game we have queen on e2 uh, attacking the knight so knight is attacked twice uh, and here is the first uh, important decision for black, what to do with this knight, what to do in this situation. So knight c3 would be the strongest and after b takes on c3 play c5. Rook b1, queen d7 position is totally equal and both sides, you know, can continue the game. However, black choose knight on c5 and this knight is slightly misplaced here um, and you will see d4 of course is coming and now black has a chance to go for knight on e6 so that would be much better spot for this knight after knight on e6 a queen b5 is coming yes and but after knight on d7 bishop on e3 has to be played because d4 is vulnerable i will show you why uh, and the game could continue here uh, if you would like to take, you know, this b7, that would be dangerous. After b takes on f3, g takes on f3, queen h4 with check would be very dangerous. King d1, queen d4 and the white are in trouble because this rook can come to attack, this knight can come, this bishop can be activated. This knight is also pretty active, uh, not really greatest uh, position for white. However, Alexander Flamberg didn't go for knight on e6. That would be pretty good for black. He found, in his opinion, something much better. Tactic which could win these two central pawns. So he play bishop takes on f3, queen takes on f3, and now queen on h4 with double attack on the king and on the pawn on d4. We have g3 by Spielmann, queen on d4. 
bishop on e3 sacrificing yet another pawn on e5 so we have queen on e5 and now castle by Spielmann so actually that was kind of trap because now look at the position white have extremely active pieces and also king is in the safety and black king's still in the center and only two developed pieces that looks like a disaster also the pawn on d5 is attacked three times what to do the only move is c6 however spielman here knight on d5 that's the move so first he sacrificed two pawns now he sacrificed um the minor piece we have c takes on d5 and rook takes on d5 more precise move would be actually here bishop takes on c5 first and after bishop c5 play first bishop on b5 that would be the move now king has to be moved to f8 and now look at this rook h on e1 with attack on the queen but also checkmate is coming on e8 so queen g5 would have to be played king b1 now knight c6 you know making a space for the rook uh, and only now rook on d5 that would be much more precise winning back the material and also have the you know very clear attack on the king um, so that would be better for white however rook on d5 is also pretty okay black has to decide what to do and they have the last chance to save this game by queen on c7 so as you see uh, this rook if it's play uh, slightly later would be much better but queen on c7 wasn't play but let me show you what could happen bishop on f4 with attack on the queen queen on b6 and now bishop on b8 would be the strongest move difficult to you know calculate the moves like that and now what black can do is bishop on e7 bishop e5 saving this um, bishop and then after castle black actually are in safety and can continue the game the position of white is slightly better because the, of the activity but uh, of course the material is equal and you would like to know what would happen if the rook takes on b8 uh, actually that would be a very good for white because queen on f4 attacking the rook so rook move on c8 and now bishop on b5 with check and there is no choice for black uh, black actually has no moves so queen on b5 rook on e1 bishop on e7 now rook on e7 that looks scary king on e7 queen d6 king e8 rook e5 doesn't look good knight e6 could save the day but then rook on b5 winning the queen and the game so um, that's what would happen if rook takes on b8 so that was unplayable but queen on c7 was the best what black could do then castle and then try to uh, play the game however here we have queen on e6 by alexander flamberg bishop on c4 very very strong move now this is the threat of course and also this rook is free so can come to e1 can come to d1 a uh, very very dangerous for black we have queen on e4 asking white to exchange the queens but actually feel free to pause the video right now and find the finishing move for white while i enjoy my cup of tea so the winning move you remember already in that game we had the sacrifice of two pawns and sacrifice of the knight and now i would like to tell you something sacrificing this queen is the finishing move and rudolf spielmann told about this game from an instructive point of view the clearance sacrifice of the two pawns is of greater value than the sacrifice of the queen so he valued the sacrificing these two pawns more than sacrificing this queen why because after bishop on c5 alexander flamberg resigned the game queen is under attack but of course it can't be taken because that's calculated 
checkmate uh, in four, actually in three, rook on e1, bishop on e7, and only rook on e7 with check, king f8, and rook on d8, checkmate. So this was beautiful sacrifice. And any other options for black? Actually, black could try queen on e6, but it also doesn't work. Simply rook d8 wins the queen. So that's not an option. And f5 also it's not an option. Rook h on d1 would be very strong. Uh, checkmate is coming, so bishop on e7, uh, and now simply rook on f5. Um, queen on c4 would have to be played, bishop on e7, and look at these heavy pieces. These are just disaster for black, so it's unplayable. And also um, queen on f3 in this position is even worse. Because now bishop on f7, king f8, and now beautiful checkmate. Alexander Flamberg saw all of that lines and he resigned the game. Okay, so this was beautiful Mannheim steamroller. Tell me how do you like it? I think it's very exciting. Every game which has the name is very exciting. If you like this Mannheim steamroller, press like. If for some reason you don't like the miniatures like this, press unlike. And press subscribe, push the bell button. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one.